Something as simple as black lives matter. What's the fucking point of contention? Please welcome. Angela Rye. And Angela Rye. Angela Rye. Angela Rye. We have a racism problem in this country. In Texas, we had Sandra Bland. In Ohio, we had 12-year-old Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Sean Bell. It is bigotry. It is fear. These are the facts, and they hurt. And they have to be challenged from the foundation of this country. Oh, you had to, to fresh out the shower, John? Yes. I was, like, running around. I was like, please, I had to get the shower. <laughs> How you feel? I'm excited to do this. I wanted, I wanted us to... Uh, have this moment. I first want to just say thank you for agreeing to sit down with me. What the viewing audience doesn't know is you have counseled me through breakups and TV show <laughs> ideas and what I need to do with my life. I call Will, Willie Llama. I really want you guys to, the viewing audience, to hear from you, I think, in a time like this because it offers us such a unique opportunity to do difference. Just to really start there, how do you see this moment right now? And how are you balancing your emotional and your mental well-being in a time that's like, okay, first it was coronavirus, now we're oh on a God. whole different. Yes type of change so how are you managing all of this well it's like everybody was sitting at home looking at their devices yeah. right when what felt like a new atrocity to some people but was happening over and over again for African Americans and for this to happen in this time for the whole world to see what we've been saying for hundreds of years. Yes. My grandmother taught me to try to be thankful for these times and these opportunities, to try to be thankful for your pain, you know? And we are in a circumstance that we've never been before. The entire globe has stood up and said to the African-American people, we see you and we hear you. How yeah. can we help? We've never been there before. Okay, so the, the thing that just stood out to me is when you were talking about your grandmother and pain in this moment. There are a lot of people who make assumptions about you, about the ways that you would be engaging right now. And they may even say, like, you're so removed from this. You're not worried when you're pulled over by the police. That's not Man, your experience. Please. So I want you to talk about that. Like, what are some of the misconceptions about how you're experiencing this? Because I, I do think it's false, but I want people to hear from you. Well, I grew up in Philadelphia. West Philadelphia, born and raised. Born and raised, yeah. <laughs> I grew up under, uh, you know, Mayor Rizzo. You know, he went from the chief of police to becoming the mayor and he had an iron hand. I've been called nigger by the cops in Philly on more than 10 occasions, right? You know, I got stopped frequently. So I understand what it's like, you know, to be in those circumstances with the police, to feel like you've been occupied. It's an occupying force. But I went to school out in the suburbs, so I went to Catholic school. So I understand what the disparities are in a really interesting way. White kids were, were happy when the cops showed up and my heart always yeah. started pounding. There's a, a part of this that people who don't grow up in that you just can't comprehend. You just can't comprehend what it feels like to feel like you live in an occupied territory. For me, that, that was the first part. And the, the second part was, I, you know, I got two black sons driving around. So when I saw this, this cop with his hands in his pockets, I'm like, what is going on inside of a person's mind to just be able to do that to another person, right? You, you know, for, for me, it comes down to, you know, after you get beyond the rage, rage is, is justified under oppression it also can be really dangerous. You gotta be careful not to be consumed by your own rage. Yeah. You know, and that's something that I've worked really hard on. And what I loved about the peaceful protests, it's like peaceful protests put up a mirror to the demonic imagery of your oppressor. 
And the more still you are in your peaceful protest, the more clear the mirror is to the oppressor for the world to see and for them to see themselves. You know, so I was really encouraged by how powerfully this generation was able to hold that mirror. And then the response of the world seeing and responding. I was deeply encouraged by the innate connectivity of the protesters globally. You have a project, um, Emancipation. I want to talk to you about this because you've never done a slave, like a slavery movie or a movie about an enslaved person. One of the things that is fascinating to me is one, you have not done a, a movie about slavery and two, why now? What do you think shifted for you or was it this particular project in the way that it's positioned? For my career, my, my whole approach to building an image and to uh, building something that young black kids and kids around the world could aspire to, one of the major aspects of that is I was strictly only creating images that were of the highest intelligence, the highest power. I needed to be as high and fly as high as I could possibly fly so young black kids would see that kind of flying, and, and really all kids, could see that type of flying as not something that only white movie stars could do. For me and for, for what my role is in the community, uh, the reason I chose Emancipation now is more than ever, we have to understand the reality of where we came from. Yeah. The problem is there's an absence of knowledge about the history it's really d difficult to elevate without the knowledge and wisdom being presented in a way that the youth among us in their most powerful form are also educated. It's like reforming policing. Everybody agrees. Or defunding, There's the conversation's been on defund, like if you're gonna, you know, have this amount of money going to them, why don't you take some of those resources to really create safer communities? Like 911 shouldn't just be about calling the police, the fire department sometimes, the medic sometimes. Maybe there's a mental health responder. Right, absolutely. Yeah. I think the idea of defund the police is properly incendiary. When people hear defunding, they just yeah. think moving something. But the broader framework, what it's actually called is invest, divest. And so the framework is that divesting from policing as well as other systems of punishment like jails and prisons and reinvesting those that, that those funds into community resources and institutions, which we know the, the safest communities don't have the most police, they have the most resources, but also alternatives to emergency response you know, that don't center around policing because this this system of policing, it's, it's you know, it's not creating the safety that it's, you know, allegedly supposed to do. The ideas are not as scary as the the phrase sounds. So for me, one, one of the things, something as simple as black lives matter. What's the fucking point of contention, right? The point of contention is that's not what the person's hearing, right? So that's where communication rules come in very handy. Here's what the answer is when someone says Black Lives Matter. Yes, yeah. I agree, yeah. Black Lives Matter. But when you get out there, for somebody to respond all lives matter. Blue lives matter. Blue lives matter. It's like. Yeah, but there's something else too. Slave mentality isn't just something that black people carry. Mentality about enslaved persons could also be about the way that you see a life, the value of a life. Part of that argument is I'm going to push back because I don't even want to address that. The conversation around Breonna Taylor's death. 
the conversations around George Floyd, the countless other people who didn't have a video or didn't have a hashtag. I was going through and reading stories of people who didn't go viral. There's a laundry list of their criminal record. All of that diminishes their humanity. By the time you get to the page, you're like, shit, of course they got you. You know what I mean? Like, it gets you to the point where you're, you justify their particular life, doesn't matter. Over time, that math says that there's a whole bunch of black lives that don't matter. When we move through the world, you are confronting defiled and degraded minds. And it's never gonna be any different than that. It's the way God designed this place. You are going to come across people that have made poisonous conclusions and false beliefs, and, and they've, they've got insane narratives running through their minds. And as you walk through the street, you're coming in contact with that all day long. So in trying to build systems, because that's what's gonna happen now, we're gonna build new systems, right? And in building our new systems, you're still gonna be confronting those same defiled and degraded minds in these circumstances. The problem isn't completely in the system, the problem is in the hearts and minds of people. It demands that our attention begin on our hearts and minds. As a country, I would hope that a part of what we're learning right now is the destructive aspects of loveless, godless leadership. Do not elect people that don't have God and love in their hearts. Say that for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> if there is a singular message I would have to this next generation as they're seizing control of this world is don't succumb to lovelessness no matter how much evil you face, because you poison yourself and you poison your own community when you succumb to lovelessness. Bitterness is like cancer. It eats upon the host. It doesn't do anything to the object of its displeasure. So use that anger, yes. You write it, you paint it, you dance it, you march it, you, you vote it, you do everything about it, you talk it, well, that's a word to say amen to or namaste to. But um, I'm just, I'm grateful that you made time to do this. And I think that there are so many people, whether allies or folks in our own community, who will be grateful to hear your words, who will learn from what you're doing and will feel called to, the, to what's next. Yeah, I no, that. I love this. And I, I just, I say to you and I say to, to our community and to the world, I am pledging my unending devotion to the evolution of my community and the evolution of my country and ultimately the, the world towards the greatest harmony that we'll be able to create. I am happy to be alive during this time and to serve. Yay, thank you, Will Smith. You the man, son, you the man. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you.